Hello, Hard Reclamation. This is Charlie Floor with uh, football. I uh, want to just give an update in regards to our program uh, up to this point. Uh, you know, last weekend we had a, another tough football game against Shadron State. Uh, you know, very proud of our kids and uh, how they continued to come out and compete uh, during the course of that football game. You know, for the first half, you know, both sides of the ball continued to uh, get better. And, and, you know, I was really proud of our kids, you know, that going up and facing a, a team like Shattered State, especially for the second time within three weeks, makes things a little bit more difficult uh, just from a prep standpoint and, uh, you know, knowing you're going to see a lot of the same things and, you know, make different adjustments to what you saw from the first time. So, you know, it was it, it was a good first half of football. I was really, you know, proud of our kids. You know, defensively, they did a phenomenal job of, uh, you know, making the stops when they needed to. You know, unfortunately for us offensively, we uh, were in some situations that uh, we didn't like to be in. You know, get down into the red zone and turn the ball over because of a, a fumbled snap and then throw two interceptions uh, later on in the first half. And, you know, th those are things were, you know, from my standpoint, very discouraged about. But in order for us to be, you know, really going in at halftime down only six points, you know, really just showed the character of, of our team, you know, especially on the defensive side and keeping us in that football game. Uh, second half, come out and score, you know, within our first possession, which we, need, we knew we needed to do. Uh, you know, and then momentum changer for them was, you know, blocking that extra point, which ended up tying the game uh, nine to nine. Uh, you know, a few misplays uh, here and there in the second half, and, and you know, we sus sustained some injuries um, on really both sides of the ball that kind of hurt us. Uh, you know, we just continued to find the, find the depth that we need to continue to uh, face those t teams, you know, and, and Kudos to Shattered State. You know they, they stuck with their game plan and, and executed and, and made more plays in the end, and, and that's really you know what it come down to. Um, but you know, I, like I told our kids at the end of the football game, I was very happy for you know how they responded and continued to fight for the full 60-minute football game. You know, statistically things were a lot uh, closer than what they were the first time when we played Shattered, and you know I. I I feel our kids are really believing in, in, in uh, what we're trying to do from a culture standpoint and, and what we're trying to continue to uh, talk to them about, you know, in, in regards to, you know, you know, we're, we're close and, uh, you know, I'm so proud of our kids and, and how they keep fighting day in and day out, uh, knowing that, you know, everything that they're putting in through these trying times is making our program better. And, uh, you know, the results may not have been there uh, on the field Saturday within that one particular game. Uh, but through the course of the last nine, ten weeks, um, I've been very happy with uh, with what they've done and will continue to do for our program. So uh, with that being said, Brad, let's go ahead and roll through these highlights here and we can talk more about them. Uh, what a beautiful night. Obviously, Halloween night here in, in Rapid City, and it was great to see our crowd come out and, uh, and support us. You know, here's the one field goal we talked about earlier. You know, we uh, we had some opportunities early to truly put seven points on the board. And, uh, you know, again, we've got to continue to find ways offensively to get seven points. But, you know, for us to go and, and take kind of that early three-point lead was big. Uh, you know, our defense did a great job, like I, I talked about before. Uh, you know, the first time we played these guys, the amount of yards that Shattern had compared to, the, you know, uh, in this past game, you know, and, and we really focused on the rush defense, and uh, they did a good job of stopping it. Here was a big momentum changer for us. You know, we talked about standards within our special teams unit, and, and this is one of them, try and go out and get a block kick. And uh, Dominic Jackson did a great job coming off the edge. Uh, again, kind of a, a tackle for loss here with uh, Joe Albert coming off the edge, kind of seeing the, the tight run formation and doing what they were trying to do. He ended up, you know, uh, coming in and, and making a great tackle. Uh, third down situation here. Again, these were one of those situations where, you know, our defense did a phenomenal job of, of changing some momentum, changing some field position for us because uh, previously we put the defense in a bad situation. And, uh, you know, for them to, you know, get a stop right there in that situation was, was huge for us. Come out the second half, and this was a key third down play for us, a little wheel route by Isaiah Eastman. Uh, good ball by Spencer here, hitting him up the sideline, which, like I said, really was a big play for us to uh, come and finish this drive. And, and here's the here's particular play we're talking about. Uh, kind of spread them out and put our, you know, one of our better receivers uh, in open space against uh, one of their safeties. And Isaiah did a great job of, you know, making a move on that kid, getting open, and uh, you know, giving us an opportunity to take the lead in that football game. 
you know, late in the third quarter, again, just continued to show the fight of our kids, the grit that we have within a football team, march down the field, and, uh, you know, good, good decision here by, by Spencer making the throw to Joe along the sideline, uh, give us an opportunity to put seven points on the board. Uh, uh, Ahmad did a great job of finishing that drive for us and only putting us down by seven points. You know, uh, later in the fourth quarter, again, just some key situations, really proud of our kids. You know, we're down 21 points and it's, it's fourth down. And, you know, I'm not one that's just going to kind of give up knowing how much our kids have put in and, uh, you know, made the decision, you know, hey, we're down 21. I know things aren't ideal. Let's continue to go for it, run a little draw play. And Spencer does a nice job of, of changing the field position for us and, uh, you know, trying to put our kids in a situation where we can continue to score points. Great catch here by Carson Hunt, making a guy miss. Again, you know, third down conversion for us to continue to move the chains and, uh, you know, try and uh, make this game a little closer and give our kids an opportunity to, uh, you know, try and win the football game. Again, kind of a similar play as before uh, with Isaiah Eastman, just, you know, different, a little bit of window dressing offensively for us, but really the same result in what we wanted, you know, getting uh, one of our receivers one-on-one -on -one with their guy. You know, ultimately, you know, the, those are things I never want to see within the football uh, game is their other team taking a knee uh, on your field uh, for the win. But, uh, you know, really proud of, of our kids and, and how they continue to fight. You know, I, like I said before, our, our, our kids were, uh, you know, very positive, very upbeat for the full 60 minutes of that football game. And, you know, again, when you look at the, the wins and the losses, you know, obviously a loss for us, but we continued to grow as a football team. And, and we got better in that game physically. We got better in that game mentally. And, uh, you know, when you're playing an opponent like Shadron that's uh, had a lot of tradition and a lot of proud history within their program, you know, our kids see that and they know, you know, that's one program they want, they want to be like. And uh, we continue to get better and, uh, you know, show that the capacity is there. And, you know, our kids are ready to continue to get better uh, this week. So with that being said, Brian, I'll take any questions. Okay, first question. Uh, how much did the weather play a factor in your game plan? starting out Saturday night? You know, initially we thought the wind was going to be a huge factor uh, within that game. And, uh, you know, um, living here in the Midwest and in Rapid City, you, you never know what the weather is going to be like, especially in late October. Uh, the sun was out. Like I said, there was a little bit of a wind. And, you know, we end up winning the coin toss and uh, electing to defer to the second half. And, you know, knowing that they would take the ball and then we were going to kick into the wind. And, uh, you know, for us, we kind of had that perfect storm for us. We we got a stop. They were able to change the field position. Uh, you know, in the first quarter, uh, you know, we did sustain a turnover down in the red zone. And, uh, you know, we were really hoping to kind of uh, pin them deep through, during the course of that first quarter and uh, take a seven-point lead or maybe a 14-point lead. And, you know, ultimately that didn't happen. We did end up scoring first. It was only a field goal. Uh, you know, as the night went on, the, the weather really wasn't a, a big factor for us and in, in what changed our game plan uh, through the course of the game. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, it was nice to see Carson Hunt and Joe Lubers get more involved in the second half. Can we see that moving forward? You know, I think so. You know, the, those two kids, you know, have, uh, have, have really done a great job as, as not only football players, as, but as leaders within this football team. You know, they both have a lot of experience playing here and, and wearing the Hard Rock uniform. And, uh, you know, uh, our quarterbacks continue to do a phenomenal job of spreading the ball around. And, uh, you know, I know the last couple of games, I think we've averaged at least nine or ten different guys touching the football. And, you know, just kind of goes to show our depth within that position. And, you know, anybody, we feel anybody could step up and make a play. And it was, you know, it was good to see, you know, especially Carson and, and Joe continue to, you know, make strides within what we're doing schematically and within what we're doing philosophically and continue to make our offense better. Okay. And at this point in the season, uh, are there any pleasant surprises uh, player-wise, either offensive or defensive? Uh, you, you know, I, I'm not, I don't want to sit here and single people out, you know, because they all, they've all gained strides. And really, that was a big thing for me with us playing this fall is, you know, it was going to be an evaluation tool. You know, so for me personally and, and our new staff that's came in here, you know, these, these games have been very valuable. And, and we wanted to see what our kids have been able to do. And they've all stepped up. Uh, which has been great for me to see, you know, and the rest of our staff. So, you know, I'm just so proud of our kids and how they continue to be a team and really push one another. You know, competition within your team is, is great. You know, that way we don't have to, as coaches, continue to talk about those things. They continue to push one another and, and make themselves better within their 
position group within their unit and then obviously within the football team. So, you know, I'm just, like I said, as a team collectively, you know, our kids continue to uh, surprise us and, and show up every day and, and wanting to prove to everybody that they are, they are getting better and will continue to get better through the course of the season. Okay, next question is, if we are unable to play Black Hill State again, do you see us going out to get another game? Yeah, uh, you know, I'd love to be able to tell the, tell the future right now. Uh, you know, right now we're, we're focused on ourselves and, uh, you know, we this late in the year it's been a luxury for us to have a bye week. You know, we're really, when you look at the course of a true season, we're in week 10. And uh, when you look back, you know, at anybody that's scheduled games for us to have a bye week to take care of our bodies on, on week 10, you know, is will be a blessing. You know, we're going to be back on the practice field today and uh, you know, ramp it up for the next three days, give our kids the weekend off and you know, continue to let them uh, take care of themselves in the classroom as well as on uh, their bodies on the football field. So you know, uh, right now we're focused on, on hard rockers and uh, taking care of ourselves and you know, continue to live day by day, which ultimately what the 2020 year has been all about. Okay, that kind of goes with this next question here. Does this feel like a normal season for you? Uh, yeah, no, not you know, and, and I think that'll be the general consensus, you know, with anybody you talk to within college football or you know, really just life in general. Um, you know, it's you know, there's been a lot of a lot of positive things within our football program that you know I've been so proud of our kids and our coaching staff and how they've handled things. Uh, you know, they they show up to work every single day, and uh, you can see it in their eyes, you can see it in their actions whether they're uh, walking to class or, or they're, you know, they're walking or, and running onto the, the practice field is, you know, they, would, they know what their mission is every single day and it's continuing to get better uh, on the football field to continue to get better as, as people and as human beings. And, uh, you know, I, I got a great bunch of kids that, uh, you know, I, I can't thank enough and uh, they're going to continue to do the right things and uh, we're going to continue to grow as a football program and, and get better in every aspect. Okay, and last question I have is, uh, we got some more RMAC awards this week. Could you talk about that? Yeah, Casey Knudsen for the second week in a row uh, was a special teams player of the week. You know, Casey's done a phenomenal job for us. Uh, you know, it, it's one of those one of those jobs that I you know I don't like to see as the head football coach or punt team be on the field a lot, which you know means we're you know not doing the things we need to effectively on offense, but. You know, uh, Coach Wheeler's done a really good job with, with that special teams group and uh, getting them ready every single week. Uh, but, you know, Casey continues to be consistent. And, uh, you know, I don't know exactly his yardage and stuff from this past Saturday off the top of my head. But, you know, he's continued to uh, uh, help us out in that field position battle and uh, continue to pin teams deep. And, you know, whether he's punting into the wind or with the wind, you know, he's given our, our uh, defense an opportunity to get on the field and, and force teams to have long drives. And, Ultimately, in the game of football, if you know you're forcing teams to have long drives, the chances of them scoring points are very minimal. So, you know, Casey's done a great job, as well as our uh, the rest of our punt team and our special teams through the course of this year. All right, uh, Coach. Uh, any final thoughts before you leave us? Uh, you know, like I said before, you know, we're in a bye week this week, so you know, we we uh, give our kids Sunday off. Uh, we practiced Monday for about 45 minutes, went out and stretched, and just kind of ran around and, and uh, got ready for our, our next opponent in Nebraska Kearney. Uh, took yesterday off uh, as a program and uh, coming back today, uh, Thursday and Friday, and uh, we're going to get three great practices in, give our kids Saturday off and Sunday off, and then get into a normal game week. Uh, you know, we have a, a, a great MIAA opponent in coming in uh, to Rapid City in Nebraska Kearney. Uh, you know, last week they went down to uh, the jungle, as they refer to, down at Pittsburgh State and uh, beat a very quality uh, Pittsburgh State opponent, especially down at their place. So, you know, I, I know our kids are really excited just to kind of see where we stand within, uh, within our own program, but see where we stand within another conference. And that's kind of the great thing about this season is, you know, we're going to get an opportunity to see where we're at as a football team, but see how we kind of stack up with some within some other teams or other leagues that we typically don't get to see. And, uh, you know, so I know our kids are really excited about that. So, you know, um, the 14th of November, put it down on our calendars. You know, we look forward to seeing the ramps and everything full and come out and support our, our kids and our seniors for the last time here at home. So 
you know, it's it, it's been great. You know, the weather's been awesome. You know, I can't thank Mother Nature enough for that, and uh, you know, continue to come out and support our kids because we got some of the best kids in the country, and you know, I'm I'm very happy for for them and them getting the opportunity to come out and play the game that they love and, and show everybody around the world uh, what Hard Rocker Nation is all about. So with that being said, I appreciate everybody's time and everything that they've done for us and our program, and go Hard Rockers. Thank you very much.